So, welcome to another week of Dive Soft Dive Talks Live. My name is Joe Boskus, and we have an exciting show for you guys today. I'm going to have two guests on today uh, Mike Peterson from Dive Right in Scuba, and I have Franka Tillman from Divers Alert Network. So, we have an interesting topic today. We're going to do things a little bit differently. We're going to dive in to um, kind of ex discuss how the coronavirus has impacted the diving industry. So say hello to Mike and Frauke. Say hi to everyone. How you guys doing? Hi. Thanks for having us, Joe. No, thank you so much for joining us. You know, it's uh, we're really excited to kind of have um, y'all's perspective on how we've kind of all adapted in the diving industry. You know, it's so many, it's so multifaceted. We have so many, um, different perspectives. So uh, it'll be a really interesting talk today. So, um, uh, so you know, Mike is the owner of Dive Right and Scuba. And uh, also, uh, you own, you have a fishing charter as well? Or I'm um, sorry, a boat I, charter. Yeah. That, yeah. I, we got three boats on two Great Lakes. Lake yeah. Michigan, Lake Huron. All right. And so, yeah, that's so. So it's um, you've been definitely had to adapt with everything that's been going on. But a little bit of uh, background uh, about you uh, and how you kind of got started in diving and the story behind uh, Dive Right and Scuba. Yeah. So, you know, uh, we opened up about 14 years ago. Uh, me and my father kind of started from nothing and, and came from nowhere as far as diving and everything. You know, I'd been diving since I was 12. Um, and, and he was a diving instructor and just felt he could do things better that was going on than what we had going on in our local area. So we kind of started, obviously, like any father and son, you know, you kind of butt your heads and, and have your time. And uh, but, you know, we grew something really fun and, and we've been having a hell of a time doing it. He unfortunately passed away about four years ago. Um, God bless his soul. And, and he touched a lot of people in the short time that he was. Well, long time that he was here, I should say. Um, but, you know, we're. Uh, We've, we've really grown a strong foundation and everybody else here that works here is, is still building upon that and, you know, going with our original ideals and values and everything still. So, it, it, yeah, that's fantastic. It's, uh, you know, I know me when I got into about cave diving about 10 years ago and everything, I used to look up your site and because there were not too many resources to uh, get technical diving gear out in Texas. And so. Um, so yeah, it's a, I know I've been a big fan of dive right scuba for a long time. So, you know, we came a long way, you know, we learned uh, a lot, you know, we made mistakes. We've, we've learned and grown over the years. And I mean, even on the dive boat side, I think we've had six different dive boats now to get to the three that we really like now. And, um, you know, as a, as a company, you know, we've, we've gone a long way. A lot of people think we're just an online store. Cause like you said, you know, being from Texas, that's how you knew us, but People mm -hmm. forget, and, and I see some people, how you doing, Michelle, um, out there watching um, that, you know, are our local customers and, and get to walk in the door. And luckily, because of our online presence and the knowledge that we've been able to learn from talking to you from Texas and people in California and on the East Coast, oh, yeah. we've been able to really well-round ourselves with diving and the different styles and types and, and what everybody does to really good knock out some good recommendations for people that call or that come into the store um, or live chat or, you know, anything else that, that goes on. So we try to stay on top of it that way. And, you know, we teach a lot of classes, public safety, tech, recreational instructor level. Um, we got a pool at our Orland park location. Uh, so we, we definitely stay really busy. It, it can be a handful sometimes. Yeah, the, you know, speaking about your live streams, you know, you've been doing them for uh, quite a while. I know last year you had us on. Yep. And so, um, you know, that's turned out to, you know, be a pretty good step in the right direction as when, when this, this coronavirus hit, we were all on the live stream train and we started Dotbox and now there's so many different shows that are happening every week. Yeah, yeah. So, so, I have a little back, back to um, um, when you um, yeah, yeah. So, um, we've been doing the live streams for about two years. Um, 
I didn't come up with the idea. I just saw that nobody else was doing them really in our industry. There was actually a company called yeah. Bulk Reef Supply, which if you have a, a fish tank or an aquarium or anything, you may have heard of these guys. And and they're crazy. I mean, they, they get thousands of people on when they do it. And, you know, I chatted with them a few times because I really liked what they were throwing down. And I don't have an aquarium. I just stumbled on them somehow on Facebook and, you know, started talking with them and, and some of the ideas and figuring out how we could adapt it and bring it here. And, you know, now, kind of like you said, with this whole coronavirus thing and, and COVID, it's really cool to see everybody else kind of getting on board with it and doing more with it because there's only so much that there's so much information in our industry. One person, yeah. five people, 20 people, we can't put it all out there. And there's so many perspectives and views and uh, ideas and, you know, philosophies that you just got to pump it all out there and, and let people decide what they what they like to pick up on and gravitate towards. Yeah, I know. Um, we, we talked a lot about like, it's basically, you know, a live stream chat is you can kind of get people together. And it's like talking around a campfire where it's a real casual conversation. And people can chime in or people can just kind of watch or just listen. Right. And so it's, uh, it's definitely going to be um, a, kind of a, a future medium that's probably going to be here to stay, I think so. Yeah, I think there's no doubt this is going to be at least for you know a short time who knows how long but this is going to be kind of the uh temporary norm you know who knows how long it'll last so so getting you know talking more about the the covid uh, 19 pandemic it's really thrown such a wrench in everybody's plans for 2020 um it's so what what kind of obstacles have you faced in your shop since this kind of lockdown all started so huge drop in sales, right? I mean, as you would expect, um, class is kind of non-existent, you know, um, the dive boats, we can't, we can't run, you know, we're coming out of winter on the dive boats and, and we're all excited because especially in our local area, everybody's been cooped up all winter and dealing with snow and shoveling and, you know, really ready, long to get now. Yeah, ready to get outside and do stuff. And uh, then you got this that happens, you know, just at the time, you know, our boats should be running already. We should be done setting moorings and, and done taking pictures and, and kind of making everybody salivated to cool stuff underwater and how clear it is. And they should start packing on the boats. And now we're just kind of stymied and stuck and, and waiting for, you know, the next round. So it's been a challenge, you know, to, to try to figure out how do you stay relevant? How do you try to stay out there? How do you try to keep things coming in for not only your employees, but you know, your customers, as well as your vendors, a lot of people forget, you know, as a retailer, we also have to support them and, and their families of employees, right? You know, all these companies, they, they still got to feed their employees and, and so on, as well as their vendors up above that. So yeah. it's been a fun challenge. You know, we've done uh, virtual classes that have had really good success. You know, we've I think we've taught 135 uh, people with different virtual classes, which has just been amazing. Wow. Yeah. Um, Online, we've been just trying to, to do different things and different promos, even like- uh, There you go, yeah, COVID, COVID yeah, less. Uh, right, more yeah. COVID less. You know, thanks to, to Tracy Balmer for coming up with that. And, uh, you know, that's yeah. approval to, to kind of launch it with some t-shirts and stuff. And um, manufacturers in the industry have been great. So all of you guys, make sure you're supporting them, even though I'm a, a local shop and an online shop, you know, support your other guys, check on them. You know, it really means a lot to us, even when just customers call, Hey, how you doing? Everything good. Right. And I like it, it means a lot, you know, and, and you try to give back to nurses and public safety people and all that, but you know, take care of your local shops too. call them, you know, ask them if they need anything, just check on them. I'm sure they'll uh, greatly appreciate it. Cause it's, it's a hard time. And you know, me, we, this industry, we're no different than anybody else out there. Right? Like, as you hear all the time, we're all in this together. I mean, and, and, and really it's, it's true, right? Everybody is just in the same spot. It sucks. I mean, we're here for fame and fortune, right? You know, <laughs> <laughs> if only it worked like that, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, no, it, I mean, di scuba diving, the industry is a very much a passion driven sport. You know, where a lot of us do it full time just because we love it so much. And it's so dependent on the, the, the social interactions, you know, your, your teaching is close. It's very interactive. And so when you take out the element of where you have to distance yourself from everyone, it just throws it completely changes in the way that we have to address how we got to keep diving and keep keep Absolutely. the community you know talking to each other and that's what we've been trying to figure out now with training like how do we go forward and it's it's really hard right now to figure out a path forward of what we can do 
on the boats, when we can launch them, what we can do with classes, when we can start teaching them, because there's still just so many unknowns with governors and what they're doing and their phases of reopening. And, you know, can you gather a group of six, a group of two, a group of 10? Like, you just don't know yet. So some of it's that that's probably one of the biggest challenges is the uncertainty. You know, you want to yeah we'll put a plan together even if it's just temporary even if it's just a rough plan and and you know it's really hard right now just not having a clue with what you're going to do where you can go with it and and what you have to do to get forward so you know we're just for us and, and probably a lot of other people we're in a holding pattern you know we have a lot of different ideas and avenues of the way we can go you know as things open up so we just got to wait and see i guess what happens and and what we jump on and hopefully we react the right way Right. Yeah. Yeah. I guess we like to plan like a year to two years in advance, you know, and then, and so what do you think are going to be some changes uh, to the diving culture that, uh, that, you know, that we're like, how are we going to like change or grow from this in the sense of like the diving culture wise? Do you, do you see any insight on that? That's a tough one too, but I will tell you, divers are very resilient. You know, we're we're a tough breed. You know, you know, we go underwater, we go down twenty feet, thirty feet, three hundred feet. We go back in caves. You know, we go, we take off our tanks and push them through a cave this big that we try to go in with it. You know, like we're very resilient. I don't, I don't know exactly what changes we're going to see. I know there'll be some changes in, let's say, um, out of air ex- exercises and rescue diving and rescue breaths and some of this stuff and and whether that's short lived whether it's long lived i I don't know um we'll just kind of have to wait and see but we've been diving for what 40 50 years plus and we didn't have a lot of this stuff then um i i don't think i mean i think a lot of things might just be temporary and as we come out of it um and and things will somewhat go back to some of the old ways if you will maybe some different adaptations and and things but i really think uh overall i know divers are gonna get through it i mean hell we're encapsulated when we're diving right we got our own air you know right um, we joked around with even on our boats just giving everybody an extra tank that they just breathe out of on the way to the dive site and back i mean how much safer can you get than you know having your own self-contained air yeah um, just stay in the rebreathing just you're completely closed the whole time you're good you know i mean so <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I mean, that's, that'd be a great question. And golly, I would, uh, I'd be a rich man if I could figure that part out. But, um, you know, there's a lot of great minds, one that you're going to have on after me, um, as well. And a lot of high up people that, uh, are really trying to get a hold of it and have a better plan than I could ever even come up with and, and ways out. And, you know, I'm one way of thinking there, there are 10 others as well. So it's it's hard to say but um i'm not too worried about it you know i I think just as things start opening up i think the general public is going to be excited to get outside i think that's going to be great for our industry you know one of the biggest problems we have as an industry is that um we don't get enough new divers into the sport And, and shame on me shame on my employees, shame on all of our customers, shame on you, right? We can all be doing a better job as advocates for our industry to get more people into it, which helps out the dive shops, the manufacturers, the training agencies. And yeah, I'm it, goes that, yeah it helps everybody, you know, it drives down prices, you get better gear, all this stuff. So I'm really hoping coming out of this that, um, and we're trying to come up with some things too, to, to have some really cool focus advertising to get some of those people who are itching to get outside, itching to do something different, itching to just take their camera, their phone, chuck it, get off the screen, watching me and you talk about, you know, diving right. and go out talk about it. you know, and, and, and hopefully our sport can see a, a good boon from it. And, and I challenge everybody, you know, all of my, uh, all the people watching us here, you know, do that, you know, try to reach out, extend it, you know, invite, be invited. Mm-hmm. You know, let's let's get back to that fun community, that relationship community, like you talked about, and uh, and really extend that hand to, to people that want to try it or might not know they want to try it, and get get them along for the ride. Yeah, exactly. On that, I mean, we can take it as an opportunity to just kind of you know hit the hit the ground running. And so, have you during all of this? Have you been able to kind of stay connected? You know, other than like the live streams and like your your online presence is has been i'm sure it's like a life raft right now during all of this and so but have you seen other people kind of staying connected on this like have you seen i don't know other things expand on that 
So, I mean, it, like, like we talked about, you know, seeing other dive shops, I love seeing that. Um, but, you know, for us, it's hard. You know, there's only so many things you can do to stay connected with people, you know, emails and Facebook and, and lives like this. Um, it's, a, it's a challenge, you know, and for people that like to be out and entertaining and, and talking to people and, and hanging around and socializing, which divers as a whole were social people. This is brutal for a lot of us, you know, and uh, so I think everybody's just waiting to, to kick it off and get out there. But, yeah, we're just trying to stay in front of everybody to to be that that light at the end of the tunnel. Like, don't worry, it's coming, you know, get ready. And, and I really think we're we're seeing that light and, and that we're starting to, to really come out of this in, in a positive way. So all of you guys out there, get ready, get your gear serviced, you know, buy what you need to because – this is not going to go till next year. I mean, there may, may be some remnants and all that, but you know, it's coming and it's going to be time to get in the water and start diving and, uh, and having fun and doing what we do best, you know, blowing bubbles. Yeah. That, I mean, that's, that's exactly it. It's just like, you know, take advantage of the time that we've been spending at home on social media, you know, online, and then take a break from it and go outside, come out diving. And so, that's the funny thing, right? There was, um, what was that? Dive more, post less that uh, Wayne yeah. goes, you know, they got stickers and all that, you know, buy some, they're awesome. Um, but all, what are any of us doing? Most of us, we're posting <laughs> more and diving less, you know, it's horrible. So uh, I think, I really think all of us are just itching to get in the water. Um, I've seen, uh, hell, one of my captains has been in his bathtub with his doubles and everything. Um, oh my god Break the <laughs> you know there's there's some people that joke about puddle diving if they have to if they get enough rain and you know i just uh it's coming so I, I just hope everybody's excited you know don't get too down about this keep your your energy high your excitement up you know and, and let it be infectious to others that's all that's all we can do right now and, and then get wet yeah completely and so it's um and you know i really think that the permanent changes that will come out of all of this, you know, it's, it's, I don't, I think we're going to have to have like one big event where everyone, it's almost like a, everybody goes to like a football game and then they go and then it's like, it's fine. And then they get, to, that's kind of the, I think one of the early steps of getting back to normal. And then there's so, another one and another one and another one. And, and people are saying, Oh, that, you know, I, I didn't get sick. And, um, you know, keeping politics aside, I mean, it's just, it's a reset, right? A lot of these things are just going to start over and people just have to get that comfort level built back up with what they're comfortable right, doing. Right, and, right, right. you know, my comfort level might be different from yours, different than the 70 year old lady that lives next door to me, you know, and, and everybody's just got to be okay with that and, and just not be a jerk about it to somebody else that doesn't agree with them or, or has a different yeah, people, yeah, yeah. Yeah, people are patient and conscientious about like other people. It's it, you shouldn't be a, too bad of a problem. You know, we've been lucky in Florida. There's enough little holes around here that you can kind of jump in and find. And so, it's um, lucky. Thanks for rubbing it in. Yeah, I'm gonna rub it in a little bit. I moved here, so. <laughs> and so, but it, it's um, it, but like the you know trade shows are gonna be. It, it'll be interesting to see how that goes. You know, there's. There's so much talk and speculation and there's so many factors that go into those big events. It's um, to see the long term ramifications of it. I think, yeah, I think it'll pass over time as people get more confident again. Absolutely. I mean, look at all the trade shows that were canceled. You know what I mean? Um, BTS, tech dive. I mean, just tech dive. Yeah, all of them, you know, Long Beach. I mean, what do you do? And, and I, I think they're going to come back. I mean, I know they'll come back, but I, I don't think people are going to hide forever. I mean, it's just not in our nature. You know, some people will, but I think divers as a whole, like, no, this is just a hurdle. You know, we're going to have some scars. We're going to lose a couple fingernails climbing over it. You know, we're going to skin up our knees. We're going to get over the hurdle, though. And, and, you know, we'll do it together. We'll do it as an industry. We'll do it as friends, compadres, social groupings, whatever it is. But we're going to get over this hurdle. Right, right, right. Life's full of them. Yeah, yeah. We, we adapt, right? So, um, you you know, you mentioned something really interesting about um, kind of teaching emergency training. Um, you know, I don't know how much rescue classes you teach or in, you know, public safety diving. You know, what do you think is going to change in the way that we do those kind of classes and like kind of the specific things about it and demos and... 
Yeah, I think distancing is just going to be something. Yeah, like somebody just posted, NSSCDS has made some changges even already. Um, yeah. They're not donating the long hose. You know, they're simulating mm -hmm. that now, and, and you can clip it off and everything. I think you're going to see just some more of that in the rest of the training. Um, even, let's say, in a rescue class, you know, you're dragging somebody out of the water and you're simulating that. Normally, you're, you know, a foot away. You're doing your simulated breathing and everything. And, you know, I don't know if that's going to have to be with a dummy. Uh, is that are we going to simulate that a little bit differently? Or are we just going to have some type of covering on, you know, keep your regulator in your mouth and, and simulate it that way? Um, that that'll be a, a fun one for some of the training agencies to come out with and, and kind of help push down the pipeline because that's where their great minds excel because they think about all that stuff daily. Um, as you see, the NSSDS kind of already, you know, getting ahead of and saying, okay, we're going to start doing some of this. It's great. I know. Patty and SDI and Allie and all these other guys are also working on things as well. Um, from the public safety side with the police and fire departments, same thing. A lot of the times uh, the classes we teach those guys, whether it's Swift Water or ERDI, there's some distancing already going on. And those guys, with what they're doing, they're not really distancing as much. They can't, right. you know, just in their jobs, being on an engine, being in a police car, like, there's only so much distancing that they can do anyway. So a lot of times in their groups, I, I think it's a little bit different. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I do still think there will be some of that. And, and like I said earlier, whether that's going to be three months or a year, I don't think that's going to become the new norm. Uh, I hope not, at least. I think that's just a temporary thing. Again, viruses have been around forever. Vaccines, mm -hmm. all this other stuff. I mean, I just don't think it needs to go that drastic, you know, we have to walk around like this for the rest of our lives um, and, and stay six feet apart and not hug or not high five or, you know, my hands are so dry from sanitizer. I've never washed my hands. <laughs> in life. You know, I mean, I just, I, I don't, I hope at least that that's not the new norm. I'm, I'm hoping it's just a, a quick temporary thing, whether that's six months quick, a year quick, something like that. Call hey, me not come I guess. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, we always like to hope for the best, you know, plan for the worst and hope for the best. And I, I really think that a lot of the, that emergency training and the rescue training, you already teach a lot of PPE anyways. Um, you know, you typically, most instructors, they should carry a face mask with them anyways, especially when delivering breaths and whatnot. And so it's, um, yeah, they make kind of little a pocket masks and everything. Yeah. And I think, I mean, gosh, in an emergency, it's not like someone's going to say, oh my gosh. I can't help you. You're within six feet, you know? No, you're gonna do what you have to do to help that person to save them, to fix a broken leg, to give them CPR, to pull them out of the water. I mean, instinct is gonna, gonna still take over uh, and you're probably gonna be fine from it anyway. Yeah, it's a, I mean, I, I completely agree with that. And so it's, um, I think, yeah, those, those practices are already kind of instilled in that. And so the change over to it, it probably won't be, very much more or permanent and so um but uh yeah they, with the nss kind of example of no more or like don't breathe off of uh don't breathe off of anyone anyone's regulator during an air drill air sharing drill and so that's um you know there's kind of two ways you can look at that either good or, or either bad and so it's um you know it's kind of the training agencies, I assume that they know more than I do, that's for sure. And so they'll probably make the best decision on that because, you know, they want us to be safe. And so. And, you know, everybody's going to err on the side of caution anyway. Uh, and that yeah. doesn't mean that, you know, things can't change. You know, a lot of people here are like, oh, my gosh, the governor just extended everything another month. It's like, yeah, but that's OK, because he can always walk that back in, in a week. He can say, well, we're going to change that and we're going to open up next week, you know, so that's not a horrible thing to be a little bit harder up front because you can always walk it back. If you're too lean in the beginning, that can obviously, you know, lead to some bad things, I guess. Yeah, that's a, that's a good perspective on it. You can always kind of walk it back and you can, you know, you can let things kind of slide a little bit more. It's different if it's being enforced, you know, and so, yeah. Oh, cool. Well, yeah, re really interesting perspective on that. Let's, uh, let's bring in Frauke and I got an interesting question for the both of you guys. Sure. Yeah, let's see if Matt will pipe her in. Oh, Matt. <laughs> there he is. Hey, Franca. Let's see. Oh, we can't hear you. I, don't know. I might be muted. Am I? Oh. There you Welcome go. Back. Better now? 
Yeah, thanks yeah, for having me. Yeah, of course. Me. No, yeah, we um, so happy you could join us. And so, so I got a question for the both of you guys. So we're talking about kind of diving management strategies after COVID kind of, you know, after we start kind of getting back into diving. Um, what is what is y'all's perspective on like kind of a top down management approach versus like a bottoms up management approach? So like top down, what I mean, like um, kind of governing agency, like training agencies, entities like Divers Alert Network versus like um, bottom up or like a dive instructor or a dive shop, you know, what would be like, who do you think could be, would it be like, who would be more effective in kind of addressing policies after all of this? Mike, you want to go first? Sure. Um, I really think that there's going to be a lot of input from everybody. You know, um, I know that I'm talking to manufacturers. I'm talking to training agencies. I know I'm not the only dive shop that they're talking to. I know I'm not the only dive master or instructor. I mean, they're, they're, they're really getting a lot of input. So I don't, in my opinion, in this industry, I don't think it's that one dimensional. I really think that everybody uses all of their avenues of knowledge and, and really does a lot of research before we just rush in guns blazing and make changes. So I, I think you're going to get something that kind of comes from all angles and then gets mm -hmm. thrown out. And, and still, that doesn't mean everybody's going to agree with it. Right. And it might not be right. Uh, it might. Hopefully it won't be wrong. But I, I really think there's going to be a lot of thought behind it, a lot of research, a lot of development, if you will, and, and talking to other people to, to really make sure we're trying to do the right thing, not overstepping, not understepping and, and just really throwing something out that's really good for everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. very well said. Um, what I would like to add, so it's not so much a question if it's bottom up or top down, it's the experts should be heard. So people that have a saying in it, that have the knowledge, that can read scientific publications, that have a grasp on what is happening. And it's, it will need to get adjusted. It's not that we are at a point where we say, okay, this is the after COVID new normal and this is what we're going to do. It's going to be, we will have to, to start working on, okay, this was a good trial, but we didn't really get it with that. So let's try something different. And adapt, and, um, right? Yeah. 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 And the diving industry is known for adapting quickly. Not every single diver is, but the, the industry, has, I mean, we've been facing this for three months now. Everyone has a new strategy. I know that people are reaching out to Dan and trying to get us, um, trying to get our input. And we love that. Um, we are not the scuba police. That is important that you know that. So we are the ones that will put out guidelines and then it is on every dive shop, on every diver for him or herself to absorb the knowledge and see what works for them. Yeah, that's, that's a great example of like, you know, we're going to go with the best guidelines and we can follow them and you can choose what you what works best but i think you're right with the experts and so and i believe like kind of top down is more very big picture they can see kind of what's working what's not working versus on a bottom up approach it's kind of you know they don't see the whole the big picture um, and the impacts that are coming from it but i think what you're saying is kind of a it's more of a living process what will work and what won't work and it is a small industry, right? There's a lot of talking that already yeah. happens and, and goes on and, and organically. So, I mean, I, I don't think that a lot of these people are talking just because of this. I think they're just talking differently because of this. So I think there's great communication within the industry and it could it be better, of course, and hopefully this may bridge some of that gapping. Um, but I, I do think there's already been talks and, and there's some good stuff coming for sure. Oh, great, great. Well, thank you so much for the input, Mike. Um, so another reminder is that DiveSoft will be, will be coming up and visiting you guys in uh, June, yeah, in, absolutely. in the early part of June. And so we're still we're still planning on having that go out. And so we'll be doing a demo. We'll be, we'll be bringing all the gear that we can. So Yeah, so come join us, everybody out there. It's going to be a great time. All right. Well, thank you very, very much, Mike. Hey, thanks for having me. I think we cut a little early, but uh, well, cool, cool. Well, so Frauke, like I didn't get to properly uh, kind of give you a full intro, 
but um, you're the research director of Divers Alert Network, and you came from the German Naval Medical Institute, uh, where you worked as a research associate and project manager in the experimental medicine section. So it's, uh, uh, you have a very yeah, interesting background in that. Yeah, interesting to say the least. Probably. All right. Okay. Yeah, um, so I joined, I joined Dan um, last year in January. I had been working remotely for Dan for some time, just as I'm doing now, just in a slightly different location. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, yeah, I'm very, very happy with my decision to move to the States and work for Dan. Yeah, great. Yeah, we've got to go. We've got to go diving a couple of times in West Palm. And, you know, and so it's been really I'm sure it's been uh, really good. Absolutely. Um, tell us a little bit about your early days uh, in scientific diving and kind of how you got started and work, you know, kind of trained as a scientific diver. Okay. So um, that was in 2007. I was really fed up with my master's thesis that I was writing at the time that was in, in electrophysiology. And I really didn't like what I was doing. And I saw this poster hang in at my university saying, um, apply for a scientific diving course. I said, oh, that's cool. I can't hold my breath for longer than 10 seconds. That's exactly the challenge I need. And I um, totally screwed up the, uh, the initial training phase, <laughs> the, the kind of where, where they determine if you want to get in or not. But luckily, they didn't have enough applicants. And they said, OK, we can work with this. So that is when I started in dark muddy lakes in germany all right uh, that was that was a lot of fun my first open water dive was in a full face mask and a dry suit and totally task loaded um fantastic training really like that and then i've been with that group um in, for about three years before i moved on and um, did something different yeah that sounds so familiar to the same way it did. we uh, used to teach our scientific diving course at Texas A&M and we used to dive in the, the black waters and off its bayou and in the winter time where it's nice, nice and chilly. I mean, we weren't in dry suits, but um, it's it was it makes for great training. That's for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, well, so uh, what was your first step in pursuing the scientific uh, dive physiology and hyperbaric medicine? Yeah, so I was um, always more interested in the medical part of the like theory training and the lectures for the scientific diving, which I started teaching a year after I got my, my certification. Um, because there was so much unknown and there were so many, yeah, this is how nitrogen narcosis works, is what the instructor says. And I'm like, that doesn't make sense physiologically. Why, why would you say that? And um, I was lucky enough to uh, tour the hyperbaric chamber of the Navy in 2011, um, where I got in touch with the with one of the with the head of the department that I later worked with, and I asked. So th this is interesting. They have um, the Hydra 2000. That is the big chamber they have. It has a treatment chamber. One it, they can theoretically do intensive care in a separate chamber and then they have a wet pot too. So they had a lot of possibilities to do research. And I said, can, can I volunteer? I, I want to have an internship. And they took me in for four weeks. So that was great. Um, yeah, that, uh, that kind of started the whole, the whole career in that area. Well, that sounds that sounds fantastic. That, I mean, that's a really good start. And we, uh, part of our uh, scientific diving course, we used to bring them to Florida for two weeks, and we would take them to the experimental diving unit in the Navy, and we could see all their what they had, this, the dive school and everything. And so, that kind of, uh, the, you know, seeing those kind of things have a really high impact on people's futures. And so, yeah, that's a very impressive um, facility down yeah. there. Just, really just cool. to visit, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's really cool. The, well, um, yeah, the, the, you know, it's. I'm really interested to see what uh, kind of your perspective on the, you know, COVID nineteen kind of response. And I saw that uh, you guys did a, a kind of a live stream. Uh, I know you did one yesterday, and 
I know Dan's been starting to put out um, some live streams and some more information. And yeah, so, so yeah, yeah, something we've started. So as of last week, first uh, of May, we had our first uh, live webinar with our risk mitigation team. Chloe talked about gear disinfection. Mm -hmm. uh, happy that a lot of people watched it and uh, watched it's all available on Facebook and the Divers Alert Network page. Um, and then yesterday I talked a bit about COVID research ongoing and what people can currently read in the news and that, that is probably not what the final outcome of the research will be. Um, that people need to be mindful of what what they read and what they get their, their brains into because a lot of the headlines right now give a lot of hope, but then two weeks later you hear, oh no, this wasn't right at all. So uh, <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, what, we, what we've what we done, Dan, is um, we put a lot of information together and I hope you guys use us as a resource. Um, we're still here, we're still working, we're working slightly different right now than we did a month or two ago. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of information for the diver, for the dive operators, for anyone out there. So please use us. Yeah, it's it's such a great resource, and you know, it, and it's uh, like you said, we're doing it, things a little bit differently. Everyone's kind of working remotely, you know, but it's um, we're seeing that we're able to adapt and make it work, right? Yeah, right. It's, we we are humans are very adaptable. Yeah, and I, will, I think I, I think the new normal will not be a big a big challenge for most people. We've I mean we've adapted. to Everyone is getting more cautious. Um, around things, making sure you don't touch things you don't have to touch. So um, it's kind of, it's getting second nature and and kind of muscle memory for many people. Mm -hmm. now. That is that is great. That is an, an adjustment that was needed that probably would have been a good thing to have before. Yeah. Ready, but yeah. So what are some kind of uh, specifics, like uh, some specific things like you're saying to that divers should be implementing into their own diving regimen moving forward. So um, talking about every single diver, I think one of the main things is use the time you have now that you're locked up and cannot go diving to get prepared to um, have your emergency action plans ready to know to, to have your equipment ready to um, get stuff serviced that will help your local dive shop too. Um, and then moving forward, it's really all about prevention. The virus is still there. We don't have immunity. We don't have a vaccine. We don't have real treatments except for symptomatic um, treatment. So it is important that, that you guys still keep all precautions that you can possibly think of to minimize the spread of the virus. And mm -hmm. you should always take those precautions, whether you had it or have it, or someone in your family has it, or you haven't come in touch with it at all. That's the same thing. You just you just want to take precautions. You don't want you want to disinfect your gear. Um, you do want to keep your distance. You do not want to um, to spit in your mask, you might want to think about getting the fog instead. Um, and yeah, so, I think my mask can lick it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's much better. <laughs> um, yeah, you do want to, uh, to don't, don't even think about using rinse buckets. That was probably always a bad idea anyway. Um, so yeah, there, there are things that you can do. And again, there's a lot of information on the Dan website. If you go to dan.org, the first thing you see is the big COVID picture. Click on it. There's a lot of resources there that you might want to look into. Good, good. So, you know, everybody should be doing their research. They should be very proactive. Um, you know, one, one interesting aspect that I, n I never thought of is, you know, treatment for divers. Um, you know, chambers uh, being are like, are they open? Are they operating at full capacity? You know, it's um, that's something yeah. that you need to verify when you go diving. 
Absolutely, and that is that would be one of the crucial parts for the for your preparation for your emergency action plan. If you go diving, if you know you are at risk, if you know you could get something, if if you are in a range where you where it's technically possible that you get a hit and that you develop DCS. Call the chamber in your area before, say, are you operational? That is what what scientific diving groups, what law enforcement does anyway. So this is just one one way um, for the diver or the dive group or the instructor or the shop to say, okay, if I'm in a hotspot area and we have so many COVID cases here that it's likely that I'm overwhelming the healthcare system which with what I'm doing, then I um, might want to consider going more conservative. Right. Especially since we've been, been out of the water. I know me, if I'm out of the water a week, I feel rusty. And so, you know, a couple months, if you haven't done any diving, then you jump in and you try to, you know, push yourself pretty hard. It's, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. It's, um, it's going to be interesting to see, um, you know, like kind of what I was saying with Mike and, uh, you know, I definitely want to give you some opportunities to answer some of those questions that I was asking him, but it's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see uh, kind of the long-term big picture. And um, it's, uh, you know, there may be some diving culture changes uh, that will make, that will need to happen to make sure that we kind of learn and continue to grow. And I think one of those is basically a, you know, jumping into the online platforms a little bit more, utilizing social media in terms of communication. That's that's right. Um, that's a, and that's a very good point. So, um, what you should also all use your lockdown for, if you're not full time working, um, if, if you're lucky enough to work full time, all great. But if you're not, um, there has never been so much information out there as there is now. There are so many webinars. There's so many live streams. There is so much information that you would pay a lot of money for, usually, and it's just out there. So. Um, go into listen to uh, people like Doug Ebersole, listen to to the cave diving explorers, look listen to the the shark conservationists. Everyone is giving webinars, is doing really, really good info putting really good information out there. And that will continue. So first the internet doesn't forget. That means everything is just gonna stay there and it will still be available. And um we will continue to put information out there. It's um, we're very, very happy that we finally got the live webinars out there from Dan, and we will continue putting information out there as we learn more. And this is really something that is important that we are learning every day. There's research coming out every day. There are cases that we're following. Um, there are the physicians have to deal with so many so many different patients and symptoms and we just don't have long-term data yet and as that comes in as this information becomes available we will hopefully be able to give you more solid advice too exactly and you know this um these live streams i'm sure that when it comes from dive soft or divers to learn network they're going to evolve into a tool um i know that eventually when we start getting busy again, you know, we'll be doing live streams from the shows, from sites and with people, with everyone. And so seeing more perspective and more content for people to kind of learn more and grow on it. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Another thing that we have is, uh, so you, you did already talk with Mike about the first aid training and how emergency yeah. training yeah. change. Um, we have something on our website from the training department that says how we can currently keep up with emergency training and with first aid courses. So the, the online portions of all courses, and that doesn't only go for, for emergency training, that goes for everything. Um, a lot of agencies have really good online learning. So all the online part, all the preparation can be done now and then it's going to be much easier and you will be much better prepared once you jump into the water with your instructor or you you can actually see your instructor and you can get to the CPR um, training. So 
this is something to, to keep in mind. Just get out there, um, put, get as much information as you can into your brains now. Yeah, the, the diving has always, like teaching diving has always been very, like you have the hands-on portion of a course, and then you have kind of the mental the, the classroom portion. And so now with video chats and lecturing like this, we can talk, we can teach. Um, basically, it's it can be an evolution of e online e-learning. And so you can have all of the theory down, you can have be, you know, understand it the best way because people learn different ways. And so it's, uh, you can really take the time to learn it. And so when you go to the dive site or when you go to the pool to do the skills with the instructor, you have all the theory and knowledge ready. And so just working on the muscle memory. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely yeah. right. Exactly. So it's, um, and we are seeing agencies like NSS was kind of announced that, you know, we're not going to be breathing from other people's mouthpieces and, and that's going to change the way we do S drills, um, even dive planning. You know, we want to, you know, keep a distance between each other and, you know, whether you agree with that or not, it's um, like what Mike said, you know, we can, you, we can backstep it. And so I thought that was uh, interesting, but it's, it's, um, they're being very proactive in protecting people. And like I said, they, pro you know, I, I imagine they know much more than I do. So they take the most information and they make the call on it. So, yeah, what is very important, um, to keep in mind is everything that is now in place and all the restrictions that we now really have to put on on training procedures just because we don't have more information and we don't have another choice mm -hmm. can always be different in a month or next year. There's nothing, there are just so many moving parts right now that every week we could technically come out with new, uh, with a new normal and have to adapt to it, but it's probably prudent to just wait and gather information and get it all straight before we jump to conclusions and have people train something and build up muscle memory that, that they usually wouldn't have um, or that's not the complete what they actually need in case of an emergency. And then, so everything that's, that's put out there by the training agencies that have de dealt with it or that are dealing with it is exactly right for this point in time and go. we will just have to see what it can develop into exactly yeah that's it that's a yeah great point to bring up that it's it's this snippet in time and this is the call that's being made on that and so and it could change it could stay you know like that for a little while but it, you know it could definitely change next month next week so right yeah 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 it's um yeah so there we go here's some questions i was like i'm wondering why there's no questions being popped up and so <laughs> mm -hmm. I, so tepo ask uh i would like to know what diving related research is hot topic in dan at the moment so yeah some hot topics yeah hot topics so um I, I already said dan is is working we are all working for you um and we're working slightly different yeah. than we have two months ago which means my research, which is on the physiological side. So we've, um, I had some projects lining up right now in May, from May to August, and they're all frozen because people are not going in the water. If they go in the water, having, um, taking ultrasounds on people is really not, it doesn't go in line with social distancing too much. So, um, so my, my research is pretty much frozen at the, at the moment, but what we're working on or what we have been working on and will continue once, once we can get back out there is uh, a comparison between different ultrasound devices. So now that the market is starting to, to put out more handheld devices like, um, ultrasound probes that you can just hold in your hand and connect to an iPad or the, yeah, right. The, the O dive, um, mm -hmm. we have some of those, we're comparing what measurements they take in comparison to what we've always used, like the bigger, um, higher resolution, um, machines that we've been using before. And we just, we just want to see if 
we get the same results. So is someone still in a high or a low bubble grade mm -hmm. um, on all three devices or four or five or however many we are testing to um, if it turns out that they all give us the same results that we're looking for, then there's no need to schlep a laptop into the field. Then we can just take a phone and the probe and, and be done with it. That would be fantastic. And it would open up um, so much so much more for, for example, citizen science. People will start buying those devices because they are cheaper than the actual ultrasounds for the clinic. And that um, it's important that we stay on top of this because people, d divers, tend to interpret a lot of a lot of things into the measurements that they're doing on themselves, mm -hmm. and maybe that is a bit premature because we have there are so many things that go into uh, your decompression stress, your personal decompression stress. So th the bubbles alone are not not the factor. They are a good, good tool, but they're certainly not the the last thing that you should base your conclusions of how you should dive. So, this is yeah. something that we're working on. You know, that's that's, that's really good. Uh, you know, I've I've been definitely seeing how you know cold affects you so much more than you know thought before, and it's. Um, you know, I've also played at least with me with my gradient factors and just how I feel about after diving and it's adjusting my gradient factors has played a huge role in how I feel post dive. And so especially we're first diving on closed circuit or open circuit. And so it's, you know, a lot of factors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are many factors. Um, one is your dive profile, obviously. Um, one is your ascent rate. O2, your PO2 has something to do with it, but then there are factors that that are d physiological that you you might or might not be able to change. Nutrition might have a part in it. Um, how much sleep did you get may, might have a part of it. How old you are, which unfortunately you cannot change. I wish you could. Um, how how comfortable were you thermally? Are you warm? Are you cold? Were you cold on on ascent? Has that probably um, tempered with your with your ability to off gas? So there are so many factors that are going into that. If, if I keep talking, we, we can we can fill an hour with that or two. Yeah, we're if just we back wanted. Here, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah it's yeah, and, and you know, just so everyone knows, you know, we can definitely take questions. And so, um, but um, you know, if we get some more questions, Matt, we'll throw them up. Um, but sure. it's, um, you know, it's uh, after COVID, it's going to be, um, you know, how, how long do you get, think that it's going to be? Um, how how long will the impacts of COVID kind of be felt? Do you think it's going to be a you know, permanent or just going to be like I was explaining with Mike, we're going to have kind of one, you know, a big event where there's a lot of people together and then people will kind of get more confident and then more confident and there'll be a permanent change. Or do you think it's going to be a long time before we have a big event? Um, so I, I don't have a crystal ball. I can't look yeah, into the future. I wish, I wish I had, but I don't. So, <laughs> Um, some things will definitely stay. Um, people's people's mindset has changed already and will change, and people are more mindful of, as I said, things they touch and think how they could spread or not spread. Or to, all this is going to to have an effect. Um, some things will probably be um, be gone in in some time but so most states have now come up with a three-phase plan while they where they gradually open up and i'm very happy to see that most of those openings are based on the actual numbers in the states and the counties um so at at some point um we will all get to to, to phase three which means no restrictions or i don't know if if that one still has restrictions and then we move on to full full opening but as long as there is no vaccine and there is no known immunity and we don't have antiviral or antibody treatments 
there is no way we can predict when this is over. And then once this is over, no one knows when the next bat comes around and there is another virus that might threaten us just like this one. This one is a, a pretty aggressive one. Mm -hmm. It spreads more easily. It's um, not as deadly as other viruses, but because it's so prevalent and so many people get it, it's just difficult to, to predict yeah. what exactly will stay and what will not. Yeah, you can say you can say anything, but for it to be accurate, you know, that's a, that's another question. Yeah. yeah, I don't I don't want this to stay on the internet forever. And then, but but Frauke said it's going to be over in six months. It's not. Uh, yeah, the, the, the pandemic is yep, here. <laughs> no, the pandemic is ongoing um, until we find the cure, and I'm not sure where we're there yet. <laughs> it's going to yeah. take some time. Yeah. And yeah, it's going to take some time. And, you know, I still think that we can, you know, as long as we're proactive and preventative on a lot of things, we will be able to, you know, be able to go diving. And then we just may change our approach on some of our conventions and trade shows, but it'll be another thing that we adapt with. And so. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm looking forward to things going to a kind of back to normal to getting getting back in the water and to to going to trade shows again i don't see that happening in this year um but but once we're back there it's going to be a, a a good reunion next oh, year yeah. all right. We're gonna have fun. looking It'll forward be good. Be good all right well thank you so much for taking the time and joining us i mean i know you've been very busy and so same with mike yeah thank you hey, we're gonna get you back okay good but thank, thank you so much for the both of you guys for joining us. Uh, I, I hope we got a lot of really good dialogue in and whatnot. And so, yeah, thanks for having really us. Great. Really, uh, really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. had a great time. Thanks. Very good questions. I hope if anyone else has questions, reach out. And if you need more information on what I talked about, diversalertnetwork.org. Just putting it out there. And renew your Dan insurance too. That's how you get all that good information. Right. If you don't have yes, it, you're, please. you're an idiot. <laughs> you seriously are a fool for not having it. It's so cheap. It's so beneficial. And oh, nobody said you. that yet on the show, but honestly, I'll say you're an idiot if you don't have it. So get it. Don't delay. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Thanks, it's Mike. Promo. It's so cheap. And everyone should order one of those COVID uh, buffs, right? Dive yeah. more COVID yeah, I need. I, I need one of those. Yeah. yeah, yeah I I need you make that happen. All right. Well, thank you very much. And we'll see everybody next week. See everybody later. See you in the water soon. Bye. See ya.